Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today, we've got a very exciting show talking about brain tumors and radiation. So this is a topic that has gotten a lot of attention because it can do a lot of good, but as with anything, it, it does have a little bit of a dark side. Uh, in that if too much of the uh, normal tissue gets zapped with radiation, um, sometimes the normal tissue can get uh, hurt and sometimes the normal tissue can die as a result of radiation. Um, and occasionally, rarely, you can have alterations in the DNA of the normal tissue um, that causes the development of a, uh, of a new tumor as a result of having received that radiation. So radiation has done a lot of good. It's, it's helped a lot of people, especially if you have a situation where a person can't have surgery. Um, uh, they can have radiation for a tumor and that can be very helpful. So this is a three-part series talking about the effects of radiation on the brain. Um, we're going to talk about uh, uh, different patient specimens in different scenarios. And our uh, finale is going to be the third part where we're talking about brain tumors from out of this world. So stay tuned. Um, if you like the show, please feel free to subscribe. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and catch us at our website at Adventures in Neuropathology. Um, so we're going to be talking about a patient who had a tumor arise somewhere else in the body, and we'll talk about where. Um, it traveled to the brain in a process called metastasis, um, and so now he's got a, a metastatic uh, a tumor in the brain that originated from somewhere else. Uh, this patient was originally treated with radiation therapy, and uh, we will take a look at the metastatic tumor, but also the effect of radiation on the brain. So let's get started. Okay, so on the bottom uh, right-hand part of the screen, we can see a portion of cortex. This is a uh, gyrus that is uh, abutting another gyrus, and this is non-neoplastic brain tissue. Over here, we have a neoplasm, this uh, uh, nodule here. Uh, and this nodule uh, has a, a, um, a, a well-defined border, which is something that we see very commonly in metastatic disease, a, a very nice well-defined border. There's a little bit of uh, hemorrhage associated with it here. And so I'm going to go on higher power just right here. And we can see here on higher power that there is a, uh, a uh, tumor. And notice that the tumor seems to be forming a lining here. So this is an epithelial type tumor. Epithelial tumors, uh, if you think back to embryology with the endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm, uh, epithelial tumors uh, arise from the endoderm or the mesoderm, uh, and they are carcinomas. So a epithelial tumor um, uh, arising from either endoderm or epiderm uh, is going to be a carcinoma. And carcinomas come in two different flavors. One is squamous cell carcinoma, which uh, in well differentiated terms you can see uh, uh, keratin pearls and things like that. Uh, but we don't see that here. What we do see is there seems to be uh, forming a um, kind of a, uh, a glandular type uh, arrangement. So I've outlined this here so that everybody can see what I'm talking about. This is a, uh, a tumor that is forming these kind of glands. And so by definition, an epithelial tumor that is forming glands uh, is an adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinomas, they look different depending on the, uh, uh, the uh, a cell of origin. So adenocarcinomas from the kidney look different from adenocarcinomas of the GI tract. Um, and so morphologically, these things look different from each other. So looking at this, this very much looks like lung. Of course, we did immunostains to um, uh, separate those out. But if you look at a million different uh, carcinomas from different organ systems, you get a feel for uh, where they're coming from. And this very much looks like lung. So we've got this adenocarcinoma epithelial tumor here. Um, this, uh, okay, so if we go back here, this is a more well differentiated area where we can see the individual cells. They're forming a little bit of structure. They're gland forming. So this is a, a well to moderately differentiated tumor here. Uh, what we're seeing over here is a little bit less differentiated um, 
uh, tumor where it's forming these uh, kind of sheet-like areas. We still get an idea that this is an adenocarcinoma though because we've got some cells here that have these uh, little um, uh, spaces within them and this is where mucin used to be. So we've got an adenocarcinoma uh, here. Here's another image just uh, showing some, some um, pleomorphism uh, and the cells, they're not forming these nice glandular structures, but they're still trying to recapitulate the, the glandular type uh, structure. So the diagnosis for this case is a metastatic uh, lung adenocarcinoma. Uh, but one of the interesting findings about this, uh, this case uh, had the, the, the next excision that was done um, showed something very different. So if we if we go back to this tumor here, take a uh, take a picture in your in your mind of what this tumor looks like here, um, and then uh, we can go here. Notice that this looks very different from the tumor that we were seeing in the prior um, specimen. So uh, this patient had an excision uh, that showed the tumor, and then a little while later, he had another excision, and this is what we're looking at. Um, at the bottom of the screen, we've got necrotic brain tissue, um, and at the top of the screen, we've got viable cortex here. And uh, uh, what I'm trying to show is that the uh, viable cortex here is, uh, is uh, it, it doesn't look normal. It's viable, but it doesn't look normal. And there's uh, somewhat of a gradual transition between the viable uh, cortex and the uh, necrotic tissue down here. This is a, uh, another image just showing the, uh, um, the um, uh, contrasting juxtaposition between the viable uh, uh, non-neoplastic brain tissue here and the neoplastic uh, brain tissue here. Um, and then what we have here is uh, dystrophic calcifications. Um, and let's uh, move forward. Okay, so uh, this patient had radiation injury, and the radiation injury causes injury to the blood vessels. And so what happens is the blood vessels, they get uh, leaky, and when they get leaky, they can um, have uh, blood uh, uh, going out into the tissues, and that's what we're seeing here. This is the hemosiderin deposition. This is a breakdown product of blood. Um, and so this is evidence that this uh, patient had prior bleeding in the past. All this brown junky stuff is evidence of uh, prior bleeding uh, in the past. Those red blood cells have broken down and what's left over is the iron deposition uh, from the iron that was left in those red blood cells. So we can do a stain for this and, and it'll, it'll light up for uh, iron. Also notice how the underlying brain tissue, uh, it, it looks a little beaten up here. So a brain tissue, you should have this kind of plush carpet-like appearance to the neuropill, something similar to uh, what we're seeing up here. Uh, but instead, what we're seeing here, it, it looks like this is a carpet that's been eaten up by moths and um, you know left out in the shed for 10 years. Uh, this is not a happy brain tissue here. So, so the underlying premise of uh, of the of the uh, um, process that we're looking at for radiation injury is injury to the blood vessels. And so, I want to show you that a little bit more. Here, we've got some abnormal blood vessels. They're not neoplastic, but they are abnormal. In the top left-hand corner, I've got some relatively normal-ish vessels here. Note the uh, size of the wall of the vessel and the endothelial cells are kind of plastered up against the, uh, the, the wall, the lining of the vessel wall. Note how thin the, uh, the vessel wall is here. And then when we look at these vessels here, we can see that they're very, very thick. They're very abnormally thick. They look like they have this kind of layered appearance with this uh, eosinophilic kind of amorphous type um, uh, acellular material. This is called hyalinization of the vessels. And so hyalinized uh, vessels, this is a very typical appearance of what we see in um, 
uh, of what we see in radiation necrosis or radiation induced vasculopathy. So uh, this uh, um, hyalinized uh, vessel where we see this uh, pink amorphous material kind of filling up the vessel wall and uh, making the vessel wall very thick. This is a uh, hyalinization of the blood vessels and the, the blood vessels, uh, this is a uh, evidence of injury. So this is what radiation induced vasculopathy looks like. Here's another example where we can see these uh, very um, uh, thickened blood vessels. And uh, these blood vessels are no longer have the normal blood-brain barrier. They are uh, injured blood vessels, and so they can leak their um, uh, serum proteins into the vessel wall, and that's what's causing the hyalinization. Notice in the center of the screen, we've got necrotic brain tissue, and then on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got viable brain cells. Um, so this is what uh, a typical uh, radiation-induced brain injury looks like where we've got radiation-induced vasculopathy and then we've also got uh, necrosis of brain tissue which is the definition of radiation necrosis. On this next slide here we can see that some of the vessels particularly this one right here in the center, uh, become necrotic. And the vessels become necrotic because they've been injured by uh, these, uh, the, the radiation. Um, and sometimes they, they can't hold on, and so the blood vessels uh, end up dying. So what ends up happening is when the blood vessel uh, dies and it becomes necrotic, the downstream tissues are not receiving the blood supply that they should be receiving. The downstream tissues uh, become ischemic, um, and these tissues are tissues that have been zapped by radiation. Um, and so the radiation uh, injures directly the, uh, um, the neural uh, brain tissue, but we also get the second hit of ischemic type injury. And so the, the, the injured brain tissue from, uh, that is injured by the radiation is not really able to handle any additional insult. So when this uh, patient uh, experience, when the downstream tissues experience the ischemia that's caused by this uh, vasculopathy and the uh, vascular necrosis, um, it, it, it can't cope with that injury. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, typically underneath the pia, the subpeal superficial most aspect of the cortex, which is this area right here, uh, this area of the cortex tends to be a little bit more resilient than the deeper levels of the cortex. So I'm going to go back to this picture here where uh, the deeper levels of the cortex have become necrotic, uh, but the superficial layers of the cortex are still holding on. Um, so this is what we see uh, uh, typically in uh, radi in uh, radiology, neuroradiology, where the uh, necrotic brain tissue very much tends to affect the white matter, and then for the uh, because the oligodendroglial cells are uh, uh, much more affected, so uh, they tend to affect the white matter more um, severely, and the deeper astrocytes in the deeper uh, cortex also tend to be affected more severely. The, uh, the, the, the ones that are most resilient are the astrocytes that are along the uh, superficial outermost portion of the cortex. Um, and part of the reason for those is they get a, uh, a direct supply from the leptomeningeal, leptomeningeal vessels that are running along the uh, external aspect of the cortex here. So, okay, so this is a classic presentation of radiation necrosis um, with a radiation-induced vasculopathy. The, uh, the underlying uh, pathogenesis here is a, a vasculopathy-induced uh, ischemia in brain tissue that has been um, injured by radiation, and so it's a it's a it's two hits, and so the uh, brain the poor brain tissue can't handle it, and it ends up dying. So uh, this is a classic case of radiation necrosis. Okay, so that was our discussion of this patient who had uh, metastatic 
lung cancer that had metastasized to the brain. It had been treated with radiation, and unfortunately, this caused radiation necrosis or necrosis of the brain tissue. So radiation oncologists will keep track of how much radiation a person has received, and uh, people are supposed to receive under a certain amount. Um, But sometimes, even if you stay within those parameters, some people seem to be more susceptible to it than others. Um, And so this is a very unfortunate case of radiation necrosis. It it doesn't happen to everybody. It's actually not very common at all. But uh, radiation is a double-edged sword in that it helps a lot of people, but in some cases you can have uh, necrosis of the uh, non-neoplastic normal tissue. So this is an unfortunate case of radiation necrosis in a patient who had metastatic disease to the brain. Okay, so this is our first part in a three-part series. We are gonna have a grand finale for part three, but it's gonna be building up. So now that you finish part one, take a look at part two and stick around for part three. So if you like what you see and you've uh, learned a little bit today, uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Uh, You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also go to our website, Adventures in Neuropathology, for more videos and photos. Thanks.